Welcome, everyone. Uh, thanks for being here today. Uh, my name is Martin Heinrich. I'm the junior senator from New Mexico. And I'm going to start today um, by having a couple of our tribal leaders who have flown in for this occasion uh, sort of lay the groundwork here and uh, really tell the story of why we're introducing this legislation here today. So it's uh, my honor really to introduce to you uh, First Delegate Lorenzo Bates. He is the Speaker of the Navajo Nation uh, Council. Mr. Speaker. Senator, thank you very much for that introduction. <clears throat> I'm so used to doing five minutes, so I squeezed everything into five minutes. <laughs> council, at council, you only get five minutes to say your piece and you're on your way. But I want to say, uh, I want to extend my sincere appreciation to the Senator for introducing this bill, not only on behalf of the Navajo Nation Council, but on behalf of Indian country. I'm certain that you have all within Indian country have experienced a situation where items have been have left your nation without your permission and it ended up on on the auction block if you may that situation has occurred with Navajo twice <clears throat> and it, and it applied uh, as applied to our Yebiche mask somehow they ended up in France it was made known to us that they were there and they were going to go up for auction. Obviously because of the significant value in terms of, of, of our culture, it was important that, that the nation take action to get these back to, to, our, to, our, to, our, to our land. As such, we did it once, thinking that maybe it would end it at that time. It happened again, and again, the nation took uh, action to bring them back <clears throat> to, to our homeland. So again, I can't emphasize enough that if it, if it has happened to the Navajo Nation, I'm certain it has happened all across Indian country in one way or another. But this is what we experience today within Indian country. The, <clears throat> the fact that our cultural, our items as they pertain to our cultural culture are, are taken without permission, sold on the auction block. So as a result of bringing those masks back, uh, as with, I'm going to presume, within, within Indian culture, we've had to go through several ceremonies to accept them back. We completed our last, we will complete our last one this month uh, in accepting those uh, masks back. So we've had a, a number of Yeb Chase masks that have left the Navajo Nation and ended up. And so with the legislation that is being considered, that will be considered, it provides that protection. It provides this is what will not happen within Indian country. So again, I extend my appreciation to Senator on behalf of uh, the nation as well as Indian country for being able to move something that is significant, very important within Indian country as it applies. Thank you, Senator. Next, uh, it is my honor to introduce Governor Kurt Riley of the Pueblo of Acoma. Um, the Pueblo has been in the news uh, quite a lot lately, uh, probably when they would not like to be in the news uh, or for something they would not like to be in the news for. And so this is a, an issue that really uh, crystallized a lot of focus on this most recently. Uh, but unfortunately, as you heard from the speaker, this is something that tribe after tribe has experienced in recent years. So um, thank you, Governor, for coming out from New Mexico. We actually did an event in Albuquerque yesterday, and I look forward to hearing from you next. Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well this morning. I, uh, that's the traditional greeting from Acoma. Um, Senator Heinrich, thank you very much for 
hosting this event, and Delegate Bates and Ms. Desiderio for being here today. As Senator Heinrich said, Akuma did not want to be in this position. We come in from a very conservative Pueblo. There's 20 Pueblos, 19 of which are in New Mexico, and we're all very conservative. And it's because we, as I've said before, in several, on several occasions, the Pueblo has survived the, the Spaniards, it survived the Mexicans, and we are struggling to make sure that our community survives within the United States. Part of that survival is the maintenance of our culture, our language, and our traditions. When we began this road last year under former Governor Fred Weil, we had struggled internally as to how to proceed, especially when we realized that one of our cultural patrimony items was being sold in France. I have had to listen to my religious leaders back home as to what I can and cannot say. And it's very foreign for others that don't understand why this is so important. And it's a struggle to really define what an item of cultural patrimony is. We often present this as saying only the tribes can tell someone else what an item is and what its purpose is, but we can't often really define it to the satisfaction of others. And so we are hoping that with this legislation that Senator Heinrich is proposing, that it will begin to close the doors on the sales of these items uh, in Europe. It's very difficult once it leaves the Pueblo to do anything because we don't have oftentimes the internal uh, wherewithal to, as far as policing and investigation to be able to really conduct a really thorough investigation. And so we depend on a lot on the federal authorities to be able to support us. And we have received uh, a lot of support from the Bureau of Indian Affairs uh, to be able to do s some of these investigations for, for us. But once it goes across the seas, it's a different matter. And I think everyone is well aware of the Akuma Shield um, and the struggles that we have had into trying to repatriate that item. So um, Akuma pledges its support for this legislation and calls upon the Senate and other members of Congress as well as the tribes across this country to support this. We also pledge that we will work very hard along with the Senator and other sponsors that we hope sign on board to get the legislation passed. So Senator Heinrich, we do thank you for listening to us and to take the steps necessary to protect our culture and our traditional way of life. Thank you. Um, you've heard from two great leaders uh, of our tribal communities in the Southwest now, and uh, I wish this were only a, a challenge for uh, those of us in the Southwest, but it really, uh, unfortunately, has touched tribes uh, across the Northern Hemisphere. So uh, I want to welcome Denise Desiderio, the Policy Director for the National Congress of American Indians, NCAI, to lend a, a little broader perspective to this. Good afternoon. On behalf of NCI and its members, I'm honored to be here today for the introduction of the Safeguard Tribal Objects of Patrimony Act, the STOP Act. The intent of the STOP Act to strengthen federal laws to protect our sacred and cultural items is one of vital importance not only to NCI, but to all of Indian Country. When NCI was founded in 1944, its mission was to protect and enhance the treaty and sovereign rights of tribes and to secure our traditional laws, cultures, and ways of life for our descendants. At that time, when tribes were recovering from termination and assimilation policies, sacred items were taken as a means to literally rob Indians of their history, their culture, and their identity. We're still here because we're resilient, but the removal and theft and illegal trafficking of Native American cultural items persists today. 
and it continues to be harmful to our communities. Each item that's removed has a place within its tribe and is vital to teaching future generations about who we are and where we come from. There are a number of laws that exist, including the 1979 Archaeological Resources Protections Act and the 1990 NAGPRA, that were enacted to clearly deter the theft of cultural items. But the penalties and prosecutions established under these laws have proven ineffective in halting these illegal activities. So we're still experiencing disproportionately high instances of theft and illegal sale and trafficking of our cultural, historical, and ceremonial items from our homelands. Where these laws have fallen short, the STOP Act holds great promise in strengthening and protecting our items and sacred, that are sacred and cultural patrimony. NCI is hopeful that the enactment of this legislation will deter these illegal activities and provide incentives for the return of cultural items back to their rightful place with our tribes. That's why NCI is in strong support of the STOP Act. We think that passage of the STOP Act will strengthen federal laws in a way that begins to heal the wounds that are created when tribes are forced to stand by as their culture is misappropriated and sold to the highest bidder. For far too long, our sacred items have been subject to the unscrupulous and illegal activities of others. It's time to return our sacred, sacred items to their rightful place, which is back in our homelands and with our people. You've heard two stories here today. Um, at NCI, we know that tribes all across the country are facing similar situations, and we're so grateful to Senator Heinrich for introducing this bill, and NCI stands ready to help you in any way we can to make sure that it's enacted. You know, the really terrible situation that tribal leaders find themselves in, uh, in situations like the ones that you just heard about, are making the, the sort of decision as to whether or not to take very limited tribal funds, uh, funds that really should be going to roads and education of the next generation and other very basic services, and to spend those in an auction house to bring things that are really deeply central to their culture back, or to try and fight on a legal battlefield where the, the plane is really tipped in the other direction. And the reason why we're introducing the STOP Act today is to say we need the right tools to make sure that this doesn't happen in the first place. Uh, one of the fundamental things that we learned by engaging the State Department in the case of the Ackerman Shield was that the French authorities, uh, who are the equivalent of our U.S. State Department, said, you don't have a prohibition in your law against the export of these items. So how can we engage our auction houses to say that, that this is, uh, that you need to return these when you don't even have a law in the books that says they can't leave the country in the first place? We fix that in the STOP Act. Uh, we increase the penalties to make sure that NAGPRA is on the same uh, uh, playing field. The Native American Graves Protection Act uh, is at a 10-year uh, penalty so that the penalties under NAGPRA, the Archaeological Resources Protection Act, and the Antiquities Act all stack up against other penalties in U.S. law. And what that does is it means that prosecutors will start using these tools to go after uh, people who, who perpetrate these crimes. And I think it's really important that they are prosecuted under these specific acts, NAGPRA, the Archaeological Resources Protection Act, and the Antiquities Act. But we also give a two-year uh, amnesty period, two years in which pe people can return items that are centrally important to tribal cultures back to their rightful owners without having any prosecution hanging over their head. Um, we want to put an end to this uh, and we want to move forward in a way uh, that really recognizes how important these items are to their individual cultures and, um, and we want to envision a future where stories like this just don't happen anymore. And I've got to tell you, we, had, um, we met in Albuquerque yesterday, and tribal leaders from across the Southwest came. It was one of the biggest uh, 
the biggest turnouts I've seen um, for a press conference that, that I could imagine in the state of New Mexico. We had uh, Apache tribal leaders, Navajo tribal leaders, uh, governors from many, many pueblos. And as word has gotten out about this effort, we continue to get letters every day and phone calls of people saying, how can we help? Um, it, it is truly sort of a grass fire that is taking off, and it makes me very optimistic. Uh, senator Tom Udall, my senior senator, is co-sponsoring this legislation. Uh, we are beginning to engage uh, Republicans across the West who have tribal communities in their states. Uh, that will be the next step to ensure that this is bipartisan legislation. Uh, and I want to recognize one other person who really pulled this together in a lot of ways for my office. When the case of uh, the Ackerman Shield was going on, uh, I was fortuitous enough, uh, I guess nothing is accidental in this world, uh, to have an incredible intern from the Pueblo of Acoma, Dominic Peacock, uh, in the back of the room today. And he really took charge and started pulling all these disparate pieces of information together, doing the research, and uh, really sort of kicked this into high gear for us, something that we had been working on for a while. And uh, I want to say a, a special thank you to him because um, this, is, this is something that's truly important to so many communities across the, the country. I tried to explain it to someone yesterday and I said, imagine that, you know, the church where you grew up, and I know the, the church I went to, the doors were always unlocked. They were unlocked for a reason, so that people could come and go. Imagine you came to, back to your church and your, your cross or your crucifix is no longer on the altar. And someone had appropriated that, and it shows up on an auction block somewhere else in the world. Uh, that's what these things mean. We're not talking about uh, native arts. We're not talking about bolo ties and belt buckles and all the other incredible work that is really important in our part of the world. We're talking about items that are inherent to the religious, uh, to the religion and the cultures of uh, these communities. And so we're here to say, we're gonna put a stop to this and that's what the STOP Act is all about. Do we have time for some questions? Mr. Coleman. Mm -hmm. Right. Maximum penalty of, of 10 years uh, because a number of the property crimes uh, statutes in federal law have a 10-year maximum uh, and because NAGPRA, for example, the Native American Graves Protection Act had a five-year maximum, no one was utilizing or very few uh, cases were being utilized where NAGPRA was being uh, prosecuted under NAGPRA. They were seeking out other statutes uh, simply because it had not kept pace with other fed, uh, federal laws. This brings that to a level playing field. That will give us a much better idea for how, um, how many of these crimes are being prosecuted and make sure that they're prosecuted under the, the correct statute. Yeah, you bet. How much would that case sort of uh, uh, provide momentum for this whole issue? Because obviously you've got national and international attention. Go ahead. Well, again, I think that, that just the publication of, of ACAMA's efforts resulting in that item being taken off the auction block was very significant. I think that was the only item that has ever been pulled off an auction at that point in time. And so it was really a significant event. And we're hopeful that we eventually will get it back. Um, right now it's, it's pending. Um, but other tribes I know that when I spoke at NCAI also expressed that they are beginning to um, see this as uh, an item or a process that they can use as well. Um, I think most tribes are very silent when it comes to uh, these kinds of cultural properties. Um, I know I've spoken to a number of governors in New Mexico, and they are aware of their cultural items being out there. But they are hesitant to say anything because it also drives the market up, the price up. But 
the fear is also that this could go underground. In other words, it's not being done so openly, and so therefore the price will go up, and, and that's where we need, do need the federal authorities' support to be able to do the intensive investigations that the tribes cannot do at this point. And I think it, in addition to our federal law enforcement, the State Department uh, deserves credit for taking this so seriously this time. Um, I, I think that helped bring to bear a great deal of pressure on the French authorities to, uh, to intervene as well. And we want to give them uh, the legal framework to be able to do that. Uh, I want to thank all of you for coming out today. Uh, I'm going to stick around for a few minutes. Oh, go ahead. We have another question right here. We create a tribal working group under this legislation to ad advise on that and uh, to, to um, both to advise law enforcement and then how we communicate that to, to other countries. Um, you know, the, the way I sort of describe it is that if you have an item that was created uh, as a piece of art uh, for the marketplace and uh, that, is, uh, not, that is something that any collector can sell. Uh, you know if you have something that under the Antiquities Act was created in 1280, uh, you're not supposed to be shipping that to France or to Germany or uh, you know, something that is protected under the Antiquities Act. If you have an item that, is, that was taken without the knowledge of the tribe and is used in cultural ceremonies, those are things that should never be sold at an auction house. So um, while it's not necessarily easy to divine these things. It is a fairly bright line and one that I think we can uh, work with uh, with all the interested parties to make clear uh, what they should be engaging in uh, in the uh, uh, in, in, for you know justifiable economic reasons and what should be off limits. Thank you all. Speaker Bates, thank you.